Hey everybody, my name is Suk. Welcome to Lead Guitar Workshop. I want to talk about the C-form bar chord. Right, we've come across this before and it poses some challenges and I want to address some of them today and show you what some of the real benefits are to incorporating this chord into your library. Um, first of all, it comes from obviously the C-form open chord. Now if we look at the chord, there's, uh, we don't play the thick string. We have the C, E, an open G, the C again, and an open E. So this chord has two open strings that we need to accommodate. The extreme version of this, if you had to kind of get the fingering going, would be to play it with these three fingers and not your first. So pinky on the C, ring finger, and middle finger, and then you could lay the first finger across the nut. Now honestly, you would never really play the chord like this, and this is the extreme of it being uh, down here like this. But this gives you the idea what it's supposed to look like. And that's the first thing about this chord. It really helps to be able to recognize its shape even if you can't play the whole thing. We use the shape for other parts of guitar playing, for inversions and other scale purposes. Uh, we use this. But the cool thing is, and I think it, the way it sounds, is don't bar it. So when you see people, let's say if I moved it up a whole step into D here, you would see people barring with the first finger to get this. And even worse is I see people doing a full bar. I say worse, but man, that's a lot of hand engagement to get that chord in there. Um, it's not about meeting all the strings. Really, you can play the inner four of the five, which means you don't have to bar the first finger. And that gets you a really nice sounding chord because it's going root to root. And it's very stable sounding. I'll show you in context what I mean by this later. So this is a little easier to move. And some people, my students will ask me, well, yeah, but what about the note on the high string? What you end up doing when you play this shape is you kind of break it up into chunks. Uh, usually from what I do and what I've seen a lot of people do as well. Uh, the inner four, that gives you the fullest, strongest sounding version of the chord. Now again, we're not adding that high note. It makes it very easy to grab uh, when you're moving around versus having to engage that whole bar part of it. Now, if you do need that high note, a lot of times we let go of the pinky and use it as an upper, uh, like an upper structure, uh, not really an upper structure, uh, but just an upper inversion of the chord. I first came across this in Stairway to Heaven and Closer to the Heart by Rush, where they were kind of walking down like G, then the is. Um, it, it ties chords nicely together like that. When we look at this chord, this is from the C form of Caged, but immediately people say, yeah, but what about this D guy that's stuck to the top? Uh, to me, I kind of look, look at them as one form. I know the D form as a caged mentality, the root would go down here to the open string. Uh, but this shape, we recognize this. When we move this, it looks like our D chord, but it's really, really important to recognize it's part of the C form. I remember when I first realized this, that the C chord, your old school C chord and your old school D chord are from the same kind of parental form. Meaning, if you play the C chord and move it up, there's the D right here on your top strings. You get rid of this and add it to your open string, there's your D chord. It's really helpful to see this C shape, I think far more than recognizing it as the D form um, later. I really, I just over time, have found this one extremely helpful. So let's talk about this in terms of how we're using it with like one, four, five chords, with your A and E forms. So I call this your E form, right? Based on like, uh, uh, as Guthrie Govan calls it, the Mother Nature's capo here. We have the E shape, this is a G chord. If I move over, I have my A form, looks like an A chord with Mother Nature's capo. And if I play the D chord with the C form, that sounds really nice. This leads to what's called good voice leading. So instead of playing G, C, and D, now if you notice that sound, the upper, using the D chord in this situation with the A form, 
That's leaving the third of the chord on top, and that leaves the chord really up in the air and wanting to like m keep moving. Oh cool, that, again, it's all just subjective stuff, but this is just kind of some common stuff you see. Um, but if I use the C form, it kind of keeps the chords together more. Instead of like stacking them, you make them all fit like this better. And that's what good, good voice leading, when you hear that term, is called. Uh, people do this in symphonies and string quartets, writing for horn sections, you're thinking like this, piano players think like this. And for guitar, it would translate to something like this. You can then do them in different positions, so I could do the G with my C form, the C with the E form, and the D with the A form. And again, that makes them kind of lead, a voice lead. Uh, you could even do the G with the A form, the C with the C form, and the D with the E form. It's a little hard to keep track of at first, but when you think of using each of the shapes once, you get really good voice leading. This also applies, uh, beyond the scope of the video, for all the inversion shapes that are nested within these three uh, as well. So let's talk a quick, a couple more tips on this C chord. If you go back to the one on D here, here's a neat little thing. Remember we talked about uh, the rock and roll rule. And for me, this is when pentatonic pattern one points to the relative minor and the relative major of a scale. So for instance, if we're talking about this D chord, that puts pattern one way up here. My pinky on the D, my first finger is on B, because B minor and D are partners. But if I want to see the shape under here, I have to know the pentatonic, which I'll get to in a second. But also, look how cool this is. Here's my D chord, right? Here's the root of the D. If I leave this part down and just put even just the first finger bar, now it's a B minor seven. It's really cool, you can see it right within itself that the relative major is right there. Now the cool part is, this is all in pattern four of the pentatonics. This is the pentatonic that has two big shapes, two small ones, and then an offset one before it goes back to the big one. Now, it, once I saw this, it really made sense because this note right here used to physically seem weird to me to land on that middle finger. But once I saw that it was part of the B minor chord and the D chord as the C form, especially in this sense, then it all comes together. This is how you can start seeing the scales much more easily when you hold them against the chords like this. So if I play my D form, that pinky's on the root. Two, three, five, six, one. It's so fun to do that way. Once you start to know where the third, are, third is uh, in the chord, thirds are, um, it, you can also start adjusting stuff. This is the only bar chord, by the way, I should mention, that has a complete triad in almost both of its octaves. Uh, in the E form and the A form, each one starts with root to fifth. Like on the D chord up here, root fifth is the first two notes. But in the C form, you get the third. And then on the top part, you get root third and you can easily add the fifth on top. So it actually, even when you're playing lead guitar, it has a nice uh, two triads are stacked right there. Once you see where the major third is, you can lower that to the minor third. Uh, and you can start adjusting it from there. So I would employ you to start getting the C chord bar, uh, C form bar chord in your arsenal. Again, using it on the inner four strings, much more manageable. My students love this when I show this to them, that you don't have to worry about that high note. You don't have to bar it. Um, you can put your little Hendrixisms in there. Like it's a very comfortable place that will catch up to your E form and A form uh, comfort zones when you play. 
All right, again, my name is Souk. This is LeadGuitarWorkshop.com. If you like what you hear, please sign up, hit the notification bell. You can visit uh, LeadGuitarWorkshop.com and sign up on our mailing list. We have a lot of great stuff coming up in 2025, and I can't wait to share it with you all. All right, and as usual, keep playing out there, folks. Thank you.